Hi, my name is Justin Everett and today I'm going to be talking about how to create an effective writing assignment for high school instruction. Upon the completion of this lesson, the hope is that you will be able to create an effective writing assignment appropriate for the high school level, critique existing writing assignments in order to improve them if you are already a teacher, or compare and contrast an effective writing, high school writing assignment with an ineffective one. Now some preliminary questions that you can ask yourself as you begin to create a writing assignment is what is the purpose of this assignment? And the purpose, as we will see in a moment, really drives the whole entire writing assignment. Also, you can ask yourself in what genre will the students write? And also, what modalities are represented in my classroom? And modalities really refer to the way students learn. And so there's going to be a variety of modalities in your classroom, and they need to be considered and hopefully address as many as you can in a writing assignment. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what does an effective high school writing assignment entail? Throughout the research that I did for this, um, this presentation, the one thing that continues to show up in every single resource is that a clear purpose, genre, and audience needs to be addressed and specified in a writing assignment. And we'll take a moment here to define these terms. First, the purpose. Um, this refers to manageable questions that correlate to the course material. The students need to see that the uh, writing assignment they're having to do actually <clears throat> helps to cement the information they have learned from the course into their minds. It's not just randomly or thoughtlessly um, given to them as just another assignment just to give an assignment. Some purposes could include, is it an informative essay? Are you asking them to pick a topic and then um, describe it to you or tell you about it? Is it an analytical essay where you have to analyze a piece of literature or some um, something like that? Is it a persuasion essay or writing assignment where they have to pick a topic of controversial issue, pick a stance on it, and then try to persuade you as the reader um, of their stance? Or is it a, a reflective, to have a reflective purpose where they have to reflect about a time in their life, a personal anecdote of some sort, and relay that information to you? So all of these could be different um, types of purposes that could, you could choose from as you were writing a writing assignment, but they have to be clear. Also, you need to <clears throat> be clear about the genre um, of the writing assignment. The genre of the writing assignment will largely depend upon the course in which it is assigned. For instance, a, a science course, the genre of a science course's writing assignment will be greatly different from that of the literature course. Um, a, a science course could require students to write lab reports, whereas a, um, a literature course could require students to write a research paper or another kind of academic paper. <clears throat> and specifying the genre will help the students to be able to understand what they should be looking for and how what kind of language they should use throughout the writing assignment. And several genres in writing assignments include the following academic papers, research proposals, formal letters, summaries, mock business reports, and those of the like. Also, the audience, as I mentioned earlier, where I've talked about the modalities, needs to be considered. Teachers must consider the specific students that are enrolled in his or her course and form assignments to match their ability levels while also challenging them. And this correlate, correlates with the next point where, the, um, where I state that the writing assignments for AP courses, honors courses, and CP courses will differ because, of their, because their audiences differ. And so those of the, an AP course uh, we'll need to have writing assignments that are more challenging and more analytical and more uh, involve more critical thinking than those perhaps of a CP course of the same material. <clears throat> uh, continuing on with what um, discussing what does an effective high school writing assignment entail, it entails expectations that does not assume too much knowledge from the student. Do not expect them to be experts. And this, of course, is not trying to suggest that um, the students do not have to critically think or to, th um, to show thought in their papers or whatever the writing assignment may be. However, this, the teacher, whenever they're writing the writing assignment, needs to realize that the students may be exposed to this stuff for the first time. They may not have much background with it, and so that needs to be taken into consideration because they're not experts in the material um, that they're having to write about. They're still learning throughout the whole process. Um, it needs to <clears throat> entail unambiguous questions which prepare critical thinking and analysis. The student shouldn't be bogged down with trying to figure out what you are asking in the, in the writing assignment. It should be able to be clear to them after some thought and they should be able to address it um, without too much stress. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
Uh, an effective high school writing assignment will also entail detailed boundaries, and this refers to the word count of the essay or whatever the writing assignment may be, um, what kind of language they can use, whether informal or formal, um, the page numbers, how many scholarly sources are required, and those of the like. <clears throat> Excuse me. It also could allow for the grade to stem from the quality of the content as well as the writing process itself. And this correlates with the next point where um, a high school writing assignment could also entail a place for evaluations and drafts. And this is important because the students are still trying to learn how they write. They're still trying to, have, um, to form their own personal writing style. <clears throat> and how they tackle an assignment. And so at that level, it's good to have like a rough draft and then to a, and then to a final draft and to grade throughout the whole writing process whether or not they improve um, from the rough draft into the final draft and so on. <clears throat> and also you can specify the benefits of the assignment for the students. And this correlates with the purpose um, earlier on in, in that the students will clearly see that they are benefiting from this. They're not just having to write an assignment just to write an assignment. They're actually getting to see that they um, will can grow in their learning as a result of the writing assignment that you're giving. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we're going to move on to a learning activity where we're going to take some of these things into, and put them into practice into forming an actual writing assignment. <clears throat> So for this uh, sake of stimulation here, I've chosen the context of a 10th grade English course which just finished reading The Great Gatsby. So now we're going to move through some questions and then come to uh, form <coughs> excuse me, an actual writing assignment at the end. So what do I want the student to consider about The Great Gatsby? And for the sake of our purposes here, I've decided that the purpose of the uh, essay or the assignment will be to consider and analyze the influence of the historical context on F. Scott Fitzgerald, who was the writer of The Great Gatsby, as he wrote the novel. So it's going to be an analytical paper. Two, based upon the purpose and what genre will the students write, this will be an academic paper or a research paper. Does this purpose require the students to think critically and voice their own convictions? Yes, as the students will study the historical context of Fitzgerald's time and then discuss how that <clears throat> influenced his writing of The Great Gatsby, this will garner a variety of interpretations so different students will interpret different historical con the historical context in different ways, but they will all have to be thinking critically about how that influenced his writing of the novel. <clears throat> how will studying this topic benefit the students? They will begin to see the importance of context and the importance of how context, including social, political, historical context, affects interpretation of various texts, including literature. How long will the paper be and how many sources must the student incorporate? The assignment will be six to eight pages and will incorporate at least six scholarly sources. <clears throat> and how will the student be graded on his or her writing? The grade will result from how the student's writing progresses from the whole, from the rough draft into the final draft, as both will be required, as well as the quality of the analysis. So content and the pro writing process will be graded. So based upon those questions and those answers, now we can come to inform an actual writing assignment based upon the Great Gatsby. So here, um, here we have one. In class, we have analyzed F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, focusing on the major themes, settings, and characters. For this assignment, you will research the historical context in which Fitzgerald wrote his novel, and in six to eight pages, and using at least six scholarly sources, you will discuss how the historical context led to the themes, setting, and characters represented in the novel to help you see how context affects analysis and interpretation. A rough draft and a final draft will be submitted. So from, the, from this assignment, you can see that a purpose is given to help see how context affects analysis and interpretation. You can see boundaries given, six to eight pages, six, six scholarly sources. You can see how it relates to the course material, as it says, if, um, the, the class had um, discussed this and has, has discussed the material in class. And so you can see it has a specific genre. It's an academic paper. And the rough draft and the final draft will be given, so there is revision and um, required throughout the process as well. So you can see it takes into consideration everything that we've looked at into one um, effective writing assignment. And the next learning activity that we're going to do is to compare two writing assignments to see which one is more effective. So I have two options here. We're going to compare and contrast them. <clears throat> the first option is, what was the 95 Theses and why did Martin Luther write and publicize this document? 
And the second option is in five pages, based upon class discussion, describe the events that led Martin Luther to post 95 Theses and discuss the repercussions of his actions, focusing on the religious and social effects of his actions. And clearly the second option is a better choice. It relates to the class. It has boundaries to it. It gives a purpose. And um, the first one is more vague. There's, you don't know if it relates to the, purpose, uh, relates to the course material or not. Um, there's not much of a purpose there. Um, you don't know what kind of genre it is to be found in. So the second one is clearly the, the better option of the two as a tasting consideration, all the things that we've looked at. <clears throat> and the last two slides are just the references that I've used throughout the, um, the uh, presentation. So I hope that upon the conclusion here that you're able to see how to better um, prepare a high school writing assignment and a more effective one that will help and benefit your students. Thank you.